Hi, I'm Jen Farley, and I believe that there is a rock star within all of us. So I'm going out and talking to people that I know that are rock stars in what they do. Today, I'm talking to my friend, Ariana Del Rey. Ariana has created uh, a new company called Write My Life Books and uh, wanted to meet with her today so she can share her experience of one, creating a new product and two, putting it out there and being a a business owner, a small business owner and um, watching something launch into the world um, that she came up with uh, from her heart and her creative spirit. So welcome, Ariana Del Rey. (laughs) I'm excited to be here today. Thank you so much. You are in Shaker Heights, Ohio, Mm -hmm. right? And Yeah. So tell me how this idea came up about Write My Life books. Well, so the idea came up um, when I was um, thinking about my own grandmother. So I had a very close relationship with my grandmother growing up. um, And my grandmother always told lots of stories. So as she got older, Um, I started thinking about, you know, writing her stories down at some point, um, I could tell that her memory was starting to not be as clear as it had been. And so I took that opportunity to document my grandmother's stories. And then once I had documented them and recorded them, I had to figure out how to actually take that and create it into a book, which is a lot more difficult than it sounds. Yeah. So in doing that, I ended up coming up with a process um, for how to tell a life story. And so I thought that this could be something that could be really valuable to other people. And so I actually just sort of went down the rabbit hole of how, how can I do this? And it ended up after a couple of years and lots of work developing into a digital platform. Um, the really neat thing about it is that it's hard for people to sit down and write their life story, but the yeah. platform just goes through and asks them natural questions about their life. And as they're answering the questions, it continues to be responsive to their answers. And so it gives them more questions related to their life experience. And as it does that, it starts to record the information for them. And then from that, it um, creates their biography and then their biography is printed for them including pictures and a really nicely designed book, which then they receive in the mail. Wow. So that's kind of the um, idea behind it. But yes, it came um, through working with my own grandmother on it. Amazing. Yes. And how long does that process take of like from sitting down and answering questions? And do you need someone else to like help to do this? That's, like, yeah. yeah, that's a really good question. So as I was creating this platform, I, I sort of had my grandmother in mind. Um, and my grandmother was a very bright woman, but um, she didn't have a lot of technology related skills, I mm-hmm. you know, just because of the time that she had grown up. So I, I wanted to make it something that was very intuitive. So um, it's a very intuitive platform. Um, it takes the, the life stories are, broken down into sections, which is really nice, I think, because the way our brains store memories, they store them kind of along this timeline. So as they're walking through their childhood and they're walking through their school years, the memories just sort of organically start coming back to them. Mm. Um, But each section, you know, it really kind of depends on the individual. If I was going through and, you know, could kind of go through a section pretty quickly, it might take me a half hour to an hour to fill out a section, um, you know, for some people, it might be a little bit longer for some people, a little bit less time, um, in terms of doing it by yourself. Um, you know, again, I had my grandmother in mind, so it is designed for somebody with, um, you know, limited technology skills to be able to do on their own. However, um, I think the really wonderful part of doing it is that it's something that like a granddaughter can work on with her grandmother, or, you know, I have two children, my children are 13 and 10, and my children could work on it with my husband's, you know, grandmother or their own grandmother. And, um, you know, through that process, it would give them a lot of opportunity to talk through some of the stories and for them Mm -hmm. to to do it as a project together. Yeah. Yeah. And then they get this little keepsake 
that, yeah. that becomes like an heirloom almost. Exactly. Exactly. So the nice thing about it is that, um, it, it is a biography. So it does cover, you know, the, the whole sort of, um, the story of their life, um, all the different aspects that sort of make that story up. Um, and it's told like a biography. And then throughout the book, there is portions where they can add their own like extended sort of text. So their voice ends up in the book as well. Mm. So it's kind of a, um, a neat sort of book or keepsake or family heirloom, um, you know, if you will. And, um, and it's, it's really the only, I think book, um, platform that does it that way. I think there are um, companies that will ask about specific stories, but to get a biography that sort of starts at the beginning and tells the whole story is something that I don't think is offered anywhere else. So yes, it's, it's kind of a unique product in that sense. Yeah. And you created this platform, correct? I did. I did. So I worked with a, a web developer to create it. Um, but I did create all the logic behind it and all the, um, the way that the, I, I guess the process, the way that the story is told, the way that the questions are asked, um, after working with a lot of different individuals and hearing about a lot of different individuals, life experiences, I took mm -hmm. all of that information, um, to create a process that could be inclusive of many different types of life experiences. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so I know that you have worked with children as a teacher in the past. Wow. Um, so speak a little bit about how you worked with your students um, yeah. on this project. So this part actually came first. So this actually predates the work that I did with my own grandmother. Okay. Um, and this was probably the, the seed idea behind um, all of it. But um, yes, I was a classroom teacher for 15 years and I wanted to find a way to um, connect my students with our local um, senior uh, living community. And I knew that I needed to do it in a way that worked for the students and the seniors and was a benefit to both. So um, I brought my students to meet with the um, residents and they ended up creating a partnership with them where the kids would listen to the stories of the seniors and then they would come back to the classroom and write about them. And we mm -hmm. ended up publishing their life stories. So, um, so this is a community partnership that I wanted to be able to see set up in other communities. Um, however, it is a really big commitment on in terms of a time commitment for teachers to have to have their kids writing these stories. Um, and it takes a really long time. So I wanted to take sort of that piece and handle that piece through um, write my life book. So, so instead what happens now through there's a, a program it's called um the youth plus senior connection program it's a program under um our company it's a mission program and what it does is um it partners local schools up with senior living communities within their um within their own neighborhood and the students become volunteers or technology mentors and the seniors are mentors in life so it's a mutual mentorship program which is a pretty neat thing to have something like that. Um, and it allows for these community connections that, you know, don't normally take place. You don't see the schools typically engaging with the senior centers. And if they are doing that, you know, oftentimes it's for a visit that just is, you know, one time and they may be doing, a, you know, a craft or a game or something like that. But there's really no deeper, meaningful type of communication that's happening. Um, mm -hmm. And even if both parties, the seniors and the kids want to engage with each other, sometimes they just don't have that vehicle that allows for that type of engagement. So the platform, they work on the platform together. Um, they work on it over a number of different visits. Okay. Um, and, and as they're working on it together and sharing this experience, they're getting to know one another. And, you know, soon after they start to, you know, they first sit down across from that person, they start to realize this person sitting across from the table from me who doesn't look like me and may have a different color hair or, you know, maybe, you know, needs to rely on something, you know, to meet a physical need. 
um, who first appears very different than me really actually isn't all that different. Once we start talking about our mm. childhoods and stories and feelings about school and experiences. So it really at its heart is a social justice program. And it's really meant to teach people to be able to um, find commonality with somebody who might at first seem very different than themselves. Yeah. Why do you think community storytelling is so important? I think it's important for, you know, a number of reasons. I think um, it's important to see, you know, who we are and where we come from. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, oftentimes stories are told at the dinner table, but they're not, you know, written down or recorded. Yeah. And as you start to lose generations, you start to realize that some of those details you just don't have access to anymore. You can't pick up the phone and, you know, call your you know, grandmother anymore and find out, you know, what her job was when she was a teenager or, you know, what elementary school was like for her. You just right. don't have the opportunity to ask those questions. I think it's also very validating, you know, as you think about as we get older and people, you know, are in senior communities and, um, you know, how is the rest of the community engaging with them? What opportunities are being provided for them to engage in a meaningful way? Um, in this you know, in this partnership, they are placed in a mentor role. So they are not just, you know, um, passively, um, you know, engage, not engaging really with the community. They are, they have an active role, an active engagement role. Mm -hmm. um, I think mm -hmm. it's also very validating to somebody, you know, as I sat down with people um, in the senior community that we were working with, I mean, I listened to stories of, uh, you know, people who were in the, um, you know, a woman who was in the Air Force and she was in her 90s and she, you know, had a really high rank position in the Air Force. And when I thought about what that meant when she, you know, those years ago and that she was really just um, she was on the forefront of, you know, how many women were had these like high positions in the Air Force. At that right. Time. Right. And and, you know, if I looked at her, I saw her as, a, you know, a woman it, it with she sat in wheelchairs, she had, you know, um, white hair, and I would have never understood really that life experience. And for for those individuals to have the opportunity to tell their life experience to somebody else, who is listening and a captive audience is very validating, you know, right, it, I think it also helps those seniors to feel seen again, because so often like through ageism, like it's like a, an invisible generation of people. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. interesting. And then it also encourages young people to have a voice to connect with others as well. Yes. So it's a very important thing. You know, one of the things that's happened in schools in the last couple of years, and I know this has been a national trend is just all the social emotional um, needs that have come out of, you know, really that COVID, I think, exposed, probably we're all always there, um, right. probably have a lot to do with kids looking at screens and, you know, always mm -hmm. being on, you know, phones, but just that communication piece and, and, you know, kids, our kids aren't, um, many kids aren't comfortable communicating. No. And so providing them with these authentic opportunities where they're going to be able to practice that communication skill. And, you know, the platform takes a lot of pressure off of that because they're, they're given the questions and they're, you know, working through um, like that technology sort of portion with them. Um, and so it, it's really a low pressure situation that sets them up for a very positive outcome. And as they have these multiple engagements over time, you know, they're really starting to gain um, more confidence. Um, they're really feeling like they're able to contribute. They really start to develop a deeper sense of empathy. And all of that translates over into um, academic outcomes with students. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you talk to school districts to get um, this program in their, in their curriculum, or do you talk to senior centers? How, what's the bridge here? Like how, so it, it, yeah. It can, yeah. So it can work both ways. So um, oftentimes I'm approached by a senior community um, that wants to bring this program to their residents. They know that, um, that this type of programming offers uh, benefits in senior cognition. They know that it will give their seniors a better sense of well-being, a sense of belonging. They understand that when families have family members that are 
living um, in assisted living or in a senior living community, that they're not always even close proximity to be able to visit often or, you know, their mm -hmm. work and lives may not allow them to visit often. So the idea that you have that your grandmother or grandfather or mother or father is being visited by a student that they're developing a relationship with is very meaningful to the families, you know, the cherry on top is that, you know, that because of this engagement, now they're given a book about their grandmother or their mother or their father. And this is a book that, you know, they can pass along in the family that they can each have a copy of, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, even when I think of my own family, or I think of, um, you know, the age of my son, when my grandmother passed away, he was still pretty young. And right. so he has some vague memories of her, but he doesn't have the memories that I have. And so having a book about her life is, is very meaningful. So, um, so I will sometimes be approached by senior communities. Um, it's something that they like to share with families. It's something that they like to say that they're, you know, that they're able to offer, um, and it becomes um, a really like an experience that they are very excited about. Sometimes I'm approached by teachers who are looking for those opportunities to develop skills within their students. Mm -hmm. And it's really a nice opportunity because the teacher doesn't have to develop this from a curriculum standpoint. Mm -hmm. You don't have to come up with the idea. They don't have to create any, you know, any piece of it really all that they have to do is they just bringing their kids to a location and the kids are, you know, able to seamlessly jump on this platform and, you know, it just works really beautifully. So it could really work both ways. Typically okay. when I get either a senior community or a school that's interested, then I reach out to, um, the opposite one within that community to create, yeah. to create that partnership. Yeah. That's awesome. That's great. But you can also do this for your, your own family too. Like you yeah. can. Yes. So this is something that you can do. So there's, there's kind of two aspects to it. So there's mm -hmm. the sort of the product, the write my life book that anybody can go on and they can, they can do it for themselves. They can do it for, you know, a loved one. Interestingly, you know, one of the things, the biggest things that stands in the way of people documenting their life stories is that they, people have this misconception that their story is not important or they don't have enough to say about their life. Yeah. And it really is that because, you know, once you have a conversation with them and you start to explain that, you know, you're not really doing this for yourself. You're not, this is not, you're not um, boasting about your life. You're documenting your life for few, you know, for your children and their children and their children. They understand the importance of it um, and realize that as they start to go back into it, like all the interesting parts of their life that really makes their life special and unique. So um, so yes, it is, it is in that sense, it is a product underneath that product then is this program. And this program is, um, called the youth plus senior connections program. Mm -hmm. um, and so through that program, that's how those community partnerships are created is through that program. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it can serve, um, multiple sort of, you know, multiple audiences. Yeah. And it doesn't, and it's not just in Ohio where you're from, it's, no, it's no, you know, not. So this is, this is actually a program. Um, we work with a couple, um, senior centers, um, in North Carolina, um, and in Georgia. So there are, no, there are, um, it, it, it can work in any community that okay. has students and seniors, you know, um, within this, you know, within the community, um, it's worked with, you know, Boy Scout troops, Girl Scout troops. Um, it can oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Even, even, um, in the summertime, it can work with camps. Um, we're working in, um, Toledo with, uh, there's a Jewish Federation. So it works really nicely within organizations that have youth and, um, seniors, both within the same organization. Yeah. Um, it works really nicely because, um, even though these groups are both within the same organization, oftentimes they don't engage with They're one separate. Another. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Even when you think of programming that may bring them into the same room together, they're not necessarily having conversations together. So one of the really neat things is that within um, an organization like that, when they're getting together to celebrate holidays, now kids and seniors are, you know, excited to see each other. They have, you know, they're like looking across the room, looking for their person. And it just creates so many bonds, um, you know, within that organization. 
organization and also allowing the stories to be documented and passed along, like passed along. That's great. Yeah. That's great. I know that you said that your grandmother really like was the catalyst for you, but like what inspired you to really try to get this out to, to other people? You know, I, I had had conversations, um, I doing this in my classroom and then, um, having done it with my own grandmother, I actually had, um, someone who said to me once, I wish I was, could do this with my grandchild. And it was like, kind of funny. Cause it's one of those moments in life where someone says one sentence that they, it's like an, something they never thought would, you know, create this huge change. Yeah. Um, and when she said that I had the idea for the platform. Um, but prior to that, you know, there was, it, it, it's interesting, you know, people often talk about, you know, their life purpose and, and really knowing what that is and what their life work should be. And at some point, um, during my life, it had come to me that this is what um, I was supposed to do. And it's funny, you know, with life purposes, they can be, uh, you know, a beautiful thing. They can also be, you know, something that you just can't seem to get away from or escape because when you know something truly is your life purpose, um, you really can't um, put it down without it right. to call your name or come back to you, you know? So, um, so I, I just had always felt, you know, not necessarily that this project had come from me, but more that it was given to me, you know, to care for and to nurture and to really give to other people. So, um, that's kind of how I look at this project. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there have been times where I've had to step away from it, um, you know, in the, within the last 15 years. Um, but I always knew that I would have an opportunity to re-engage. So, that's great. So where do you, where do you want six, what does success look like for write my life book? Where do you want, where do you envision it going? I, I think it looks like getting to the people that it's meant to serve. Mm. Um, and that can mean lots of things, you know, um, right now I'm working, you know, with, um, some home health providers that are looking at, um, making it available, you know, and, and I think of, you know, the person who's at home having somebody, a provider come into their home and, you know, they're going to be with, spend a number of hours with them, you know, well, what could that time look like? That time could look like the two people, you know, just watching TV, but it doesn't have to look like that. It can look like, you know, working through this project together. Mm -hmm. um, it can look at like them, you know, talking with one another, learning about each other and really forming that bond so that it becomes something much more special and personal than, mm -hmm. you know, having just, you know, someone coming to the house to be there with your family member. Um, you know, it looks like kids coming into a senior center and looking around at like the new beautiful senior center that was, you know, built and, and never like having a reason to step into that building before yeah. and now all of a sudden they're there and they've found the road there. So, which means they can find the road back, um, to visit, you know, because that door yeah. opened, um, it looks like, you know, seniors going into a school and going into a classroom because now they have a partnership with them and, you know, being invited to do science experiments because now, mm. friends. and so they're, they're in that room and they're, you know, they're part of something. And so really it, it looks like community. That's what it looks like to me. So that's why it really, you know, it's a company, but it's really more of a mission, um, and it really looks like the person who is able to walk down the street and see somebody who might be in a completely different situation than they are, but be able to look at them and understand that they still have, there's a common thread that runs through all of us because they learned that lesson when they were younger. And now they can look at somebody and instead of seeing the thing that separates them, they can look at it differently and they can be intentional in the way they engage with somebody knowing that, you know, there's probably something that we share in common. So it, it looks like all of those things. Yeah. That is just so beautiful. It really gives a lot of hope for um, future generations, as well as a gift to the past generations, um, you know, that, that connection. So I feel like this mission that you have is that bridge between the two mm -hmm. that's really beautiful i know i wish i and i remember my grandfather who survived world war ii um 
I, I always wanted to know what his stories were, but he was never willing to share. Mm-hmm. It was really hard for him to share. Do you ever come across those situations where it's just too hard? So that's a really interesting question. So, so I actually worked with a woman um, whose grandmother was a Holocaust survivor mm-hmm. and um, one of the, one of the interesting things that she ended up experiencing working through this um, process was that um, because the process asked questions that were very um, similar, you know, it may start off by describing your parents and what street you lived on and um, <laughs> questions I think that are um that are easier to talk about from a, an emotional standpoint, let's say, it sort of allowed that door to open. Mm. Um, and and they were able then to start to share some of the more difficult things. I think if you start with a question, like something like, well, tell me about you know the war or tell me about, it's just, it's it may be too emotionally um, overloading for someone to go there um this allows them to go as deep as they'd like to so if they if they you know and they can they can stop wherever their comfort zone is to stop um and so so no it's 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 really actually and i don't know that it was intentionally designed that way um but in conversation with this woman, I realized that it did exactly that for her. And she said, I never knew how to talk to my grandmother about these stories. I I just couldn't bring it up. But, but Mm -hmm. in going through this process, I realized that, you know, we started sort of cracking the door and her grandmother was able to share some of that. Mm. It's really creating a safe space for them to be comfortable enough to talk about their past and think about things that were good um, or or that were meaningful to them. I think that's, exactly. that's a lot about, that says a lot about communication itself too, like to be able to um, have a common ground before you get into the deep stuff. Yes. Yes. I think so. And really, you know, when I would work with my grandmother, we would work a section at a time and, <laughs> you know, she was, by the time we worked with her, she was, I worked with her on this, she was 92. And so I would ask her, you know, um, you know, what she was up for. And we would kind of, um, you know, go from there. But one of the funny things or kind of interesting things was um, by the time I had started this with my grandmother, she was actually experiencing early stages of um, dementia. And um, I would sit with her and it was oftentimes that she was kind of sitting there and she just appeared to be a little bit lost. And as I would start to ask the questions, I would get in a question, start the question and it would, you know, start. And then all of a sudden I would watch her transform. She would go from this lost sort of, you know, person sitting there to, it was like, it gave me, um, gave her back to me because she was able to like dig into those memories. And then I saw her personality and all the different aspects of her that I loved so much, you know, come back. Um, so it's, it's very powerful, you know, when you think of somebody who is going through, um, you know, memory, um, loss, Mm -hmm. um, it, it is really powerful to, to be able to engage them in that way. And, you know, one of the things that, you know, you find even with, um, with adults who have, you know, memory care issues is that, um, is that although they may not exactly remember what they did that morning or exactly what happened, they're left feeling better for the rest of the day. Yeah. <laughs> so they're, yeah. they're left with, with the essence of the interaction of the experience. They're left feeling more valued. Um, and it, it isn't always important that they remember the exact, you know, mm-hmm. content of what you talked about that morning. Yeah. Yeah. I remember my grandmother had memory issues and it it was hard to engage with her because it's like, she couldn't tell you what she did that day. But the first time that she met my now husband, she said, he said that, Oh, he was originally from New York. And she started telling us stories of when she was a girl growing up in New York. And she's like, do you know this park in Brooklyn? Like she was sort of describing a park and I had never seen my grandmother in that way as a little girl so like now it's like a memory that I carry of her sharing that little bit of information to when we didn't think that she had 
much to share anymore. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, it's just incredible. The way that um, it's crazy. Like, yeah. Can transform when um, they start to talk about past memories. It's just, it's a really, it's an incredible phenomenon. I know it has, you know, to do a lot to do with the brain and the way it stores information, but um, it's just really beautiful. You know, you're giving, you're giving these really precious moments back to people. Yeah. So what impact has creating this business had on you? On me personally? Yeah. Um, I, I, it's always asking me to do something outside my comfort zone. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, uh, it's the idea of, you know, living outside my comfort zone, just um, continuously. Um, I think it's so valuable because it's where we grow. Um, you know, it's where, you know, you, you can continue to develop and change. Um, but you have to be okay with not being comfortable. You have to be willing to walk into a lot of situations that you're just not sure, you know, what the outcome is going to be. Um, and, and, and that's okay. Um, it really, you know, when you step out and do something that is quite different because, you know, I, I could have stayed in a classroom for another, you know, 15 years and, yeah, and, you know, done meaningful work. Um, but when you choose to do something that's really, you know, different, you really have to be ready for, you know, the things that make you, I I'll just, you know, say like insecure to all come to the surface uh, yeah. because you can't really rely on, you know, past knowledge and you know what you've already mastered you're really kind of stepping into like uncharted areas um and you have to love learning i just I, you know whether it's been learning how web development works or learning you know search engine optimization or you know learning about i don't know so many different facets of uh, you know design or or you know all those things um I think you just, you, you have to be a curious person and just really enjoy that process. Mm, yeah. Not only does it, do you have to be a curious person for the product that you've created, but also curious in business. Yes. It sounds like, yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah. You have yeah. to like people. <laughs> I, I, you, I mean that. I'm not yeah? joking. joking. Like, you, you do. You have to, you know, you have to like people in terms of, you just have to be very like, um, willing to, to talk, to meet, to, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So how do you prepare yourself? Like any daily practices to keep yourself focused on those goals? Sure. So I start, I, I start every day with, um, like quiet prayer time. Um, I don't really like to look at my phone. I don't like to look at Facebook, um, or do anything really. The only thing I do is I come downstairs, I get greeted by my dog, <laughs> grab a cup of coffee <laughs> and head up to the, you know, the, we have a third floor. I head up to the third floor and I just create that quiet space. And, you know, for me, um, interestingly, you know, like prayer time for me is really a lot less of talking and asking and a lot more of listening, mm. and so that's what, you know, that's my practice. So it might be 5% asking and probably 95%, um, waiting to hear. And that's how I start every single day. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It's my, I, I don't think I could um, be in life the way that I am without that. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like it's re a really important piece mm -hmm. for you. When you started your business and when you walked away, you know, walked away from your career as an educator, what was the best piece of advice that you ever received? Oh gosh, that's a good question. Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I honestly don't know because I'll tell you this. I don't know, you know, I think that to go into something like business um, and to start something yourself and, and to do it in an area that is kind of a little more like uncharted territory, you know, <laughs> It, it it can be not a huge like like club. So there's if I say it that way, in terms of there may not be a lot of people who share that exact experience. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm not sure if um if if just anybody can give advice about that. But I will say this that I I have had advice from on, other entrepreneurs 
And they will all say that that it's it could be very scary that there are days that you're, you know, very unsure. You don't really know what the outcome is going to be. Um, if, you know, anybody who does something like this is taking a, you know, a risk. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's really no assurance you're walking away from something that is, you know, has more of that sort of predictability, um, you know, where it's kind of mapped out for you. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, probably just seeing people who had passion towards something that they felt very passionate about. Um, there's a level, I think, of when you really believe in something that you're willing to put something on the line to see it happen. Yeah. You know, and for me, it, it has a lot to do with um, the belief that this could be very helpful to a lot of people. And so in many ways, it's like, I'm trying to do this um, for people who I think will like their lives will be better from it. And um, yeah, so in some ways I see it almost as an advocacy role. Interesting, an advocacy role, that's cool. So how do you connect with that feeling of confidence of, of being a rock star on those <laughs> days that is not easy, like you're grinding away? <laughs> how do you connect to that feeling? That's a good question. So um, so I have a very, um, as I kind of talked about earlier, I have a very deep connection um, to my relationship, you know, my spiritual um, side, my relationship with God. Um, and I think that if that I often have the realization that I'm not doing this on my own. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that were I to try to do it on my own and try to feel like this is, you know, yes, I'm using my skills, you know, I'm using my knowledge, I'm using the creativity that I have. Um, but if I were to try to carry the weight of it on my own and, um, and do that, I think that oftentimes I would probably lack, you know, the confidence that I would need. Um, and the security that I would need. Um, so, so I don't view it that way. Instead, mm -hmm. I view it as um, I am, you know, leaning on, you know, somebody who can do this and who um, is you know, more than equipped. And that's what I put my confidence in. So my confidence is not in myself, you know, but something greater than myself. Mm. Yeah. So I'm going to ask this, the question that I ask everybody. Okay. Um, and I think it's very important because, you know, <laughs> you know, music is, is a great thing to, as, as, as a great connector. <laughs> yeah. So what is your rock star theme song? What is the song oh. that connects you to that confidence, that rock star yep. feeling? Yep. So it's very in line with what I just spoke about. So when I yeah. think about my rock star theme song, it's not like anything that, you know, like, I, I have the music I like to work out to. That's different. Right. Music, you know what I mean? I have the music that, you know, really gets me excited to go, you know, hang out with people. It's not that, but when it's really, when I'm thinking about this aspect of my life and I think about just in terms of like doing something that's really meaningful, I think of the um, Patty Griffin song, um, Up to the Mountain. And um, you're familiar with that song? Yes. Yes, very much. <laughs> So, you know, the story behind that song. Um, and I think the song is written about Martin Luther King and it's, mm. um, it speaks to what he was asked to do. He knew that there was a call on his life and he knew that there was, you know, a definite purpose and something that he was being, you know, brought to. And I think, you know, in, in many of the same ways that I described, I'm sure he felt inadequate for that because he was asked to do such a, um, you know, such a big, um, task, um, yeah. and it placed in his hands. And I'm sure he felt a great deal of responsibility for that. And the sentiment behind the song is that, you know, I went here, I went up to the mountain because you asked me to. Um, and he said, some days I look down afraid I'll fall. And then he said, um, then I hear your sweet voice come and go telling me softly, you love me. And then he talks about the peaceful valley that, you know, he may get to in this life, he may get to in another life, but he knows that that's ultimately where he'll end up. And I think the idea behind the song is like the idea of being asked to do some things that could be very difficult and allowing yourself to be in service to those things and being willing to, you know, set aside 
your, you know, the, the fear of failure set aside, you know, the, the risk or, you know, um, or the amount of work that might be involved and really put yourself in a mind that you're going to be in service to something that's much greater than you, you know? And so I think it's just one of the most beautiful songs. Plus Patty Griffin has one of the most beautiful voices. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I find that song to be very beautiful, very inspiring and, you know, very reassuring um, that, you know, that there's people, many people who have done some really, um, you know, difficult things and big things and, um, and, uh, and it's not always easy, no. but, you know, ultimately you're loved and, and you're willing to do it. Yeah. I feel like that song perfectly summarizes this whole discussion and <laughs> all that you have been called to do and the mission behind this business that you've created and the community that you want to help cultivate. That's a perfect description. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Ari, how can people find you? How can, um, how can people connect with you? Yeah. So, um, so my website is um, www.writemylifebook.com. <laughs> Um, when you go to the website, you'll see under the website, you'll see programs and, um, under there, you can click on the youth plus senior connections program. Um, there's a contact, you know, form on the website and, um, you can, um, complete that contact form and I would reach out to you and, you know, see how we can get this, um, program started, you know, within your community, um, and you can also email me at um, write my life book at gmail.com is another way to get in touch. Um, so many ways. We're on, yeah. uh, I'm on Facebook, write my life book on Instagram. LinkedIn. 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 Yep. Awesome. Was there anything else that you'd love to sh like to share with the audience just, that I, I just to you, Jen, that I love that you're doing this series. I think it's so wonderful. You know, it's so interesting. You know, one of the things about us is that we're all so different and we all just have these passions in different areas and having a conversation with somebody about what they're passionate about. Yeah. It's just, you know, they go way, you know, they're going to get so deep into something, but it's, it's like opening up like a little small, you know, window into, you know, this thing that you may not have any idea about. And I love that you're taking the time to showcase that. And, you know, really, again, you're like a story also helping people tell their stories too. I mean, and it's, it's a great thing. Um, so, I mean, I just, I'm glad that you're doing this and I love, you know, the positive energy you bring to everything and you're such a kind person and, I'm just glad that we got a chance to talk today. Thank you. I appreciate that too. I, um, you know, this, I have put a pause on this series for such a long time and kind of like hearing or calling or listening, I felt a need to, I just know so many people that have some amazing things to share. And um, I just felt the need to start the series back up again and, and to highlight those amazing people. And you were top of the list uh, because I think what you're doing and what you're creating is really going to make a difference to so many people one by one. <laughs> I hope so. I absolutely hope so. So thank you for saying that. And thank you for um, our conversation today. Thank you.